Atomic Habits Clear proposes the four laws of behaviour change. Make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy and make it satisfying. That's how we can form positive habits, but also we can reverse them to break negative habits. Now, of course, each of these are insights within themselves, but actually I've picked out five other points from the book to discuss in further detail today. As always, I'm looking at these insights through the lens of sports performance, but of course, they can all apply to anyone regardless of their field of interest. So let's take a look at today's first insight. So I've previously written a blog post about using um, compound interest as an analogy for sports performance. And so it really made me smile to um, read James Clear use the, the same analogy to describe habits as the compound interest of self-improvement. Clear shows that by getting 1% better every day for a year, we mathematically would become 37 times greater than what we started with. Um, knowledge and productivity and relationships can all positively compound, um, but likewise so can stress and negative thoughts and outrage and other negative emotions. Of course, getting 1% better every day for a year is much easier said than done, but automating these positive behaviours that can compound over time is is ultimately what we're trying to achieve and also what we're trying to help our athletes to achieve. Um, these behaviours that promote positive preparation and ultimately performance um, around nutrition and recovery and warm-ups and prehab exercises. Now because these outcomes are delayed we don't see the immediate uh, improvement and therefore we don't get instant reward or gratification through these behaviours and that's why we need to have patience in ourselves but also of course our athletes need to have both patience and belief to maintain that buy-in to the behaviours and to build those habits. So this part of the book was very much akin to Simon Sinek's Golden Circle and I've previously written about that on the blog and about how we can apply that in sports science. So if you're not familiar with that, maybe check out that post and I'll, I'll, I'll pop the link below. So James Clear also proposes this three layered circle approach, this time about behavior change. And so on the outside we have outcomes and then in the middle we have processes and in the center of the circle we have identity. And when trying to change a habit, most of us start with the outer ring of the circle. So the outcomes, we think about what we want to achieve, whether that's um, losing weight or writing a book or, or winning um, a game or a championship. But Clear argues that we need to instead work from the inside out and start with identity based behaviour change. And so with this mindset, it's not about what you want to do, but it's about who you want to become, the type of person you want to become. And so it doesn't matter so much, at least early on, about what you do at the gym, how long you stay there, or how many pages or words that you write. The important thing is showing up because it then tells your brain that you are that kind of a person. In particular, we can use this storyline with our younger athletes in particular. What type of athlete do they want to be? Of course, they want to go on to be the superstar, the MVP, the player of the year. But actually, do they want to be the professional? Do they want to be the, the athlete who does absolutely everything they can to prepare for performance? Well, in order to have that identity, you then have to show these behaviours. The cue is the first step in the habit loop. And you might have read this in other works on this topic, like Charles Duhigg's um, book, on The Power of Habit. Because of that, what we see in our environment greatly affects our habits. Generally speaking, our vision is our most powerful sense. That's one of the reasons why videos and YouTube um, are so popular. But also that means that a small change in what we see in our environment can have a big impact on what we do. Now, if you're like me, you have often struggled to exert willpower when the biscuit tin is out 
or if you're in work and there's chocolates or donuts or cakes lying around. But we can use this knowledge to shape our home and our workspace to encourage us to exhibit behaviours that we want to achieve. If we want to drink more water, do we have that out on show? If we want to read more journals, have we got them printed and available on our desk? All these actions help to make it obvious, which is one of the behaviour laws that James Clear proposes. And so we also want to make it obvious for our athletes as well. Are their supplements or their recovery shakes on show, obvious to them? Can we set up um, equipment or a circuit for prehab exercises in their walkway to the field so it is obvious? And with the recovery modalities that we have available, do we make it obvious what they should do, how they should use them. And I've previously written on the blog about signalling by seeing other athletes doing the behaviours that we want to exhibit can signal, particularly to either new players to that environment or younger athletes, that that is the norm. And so we can make it obvious and that will continue to signal to others that these are the kind of behaviours that we want to elicit in this environment. So this was a, a small section within the book, but it really jumped out at me. And again, it links in with that signalling piece and that as humans, we are driven to try and belong and therefore we will imitate the behaviours shown within our culture. And so in, individuals can be greatly influenced by these societal norms. So Clear identifies these three groups that generally we choose to imitate with our behaviours. So the close, that's what do our friends and our family do? The many, what is popular and common within our culture? And the powerful, so what do our leaders and the powerful uh, members of the group do? I think this is particularly interesting in the context of, of sports and particularly a team sports. Um, it's worth considering then trying to identify who the close the many and the powerful are and of course this will be different for different individuals across but perhaps if we're trying to get either the team or an individual to exhibit slightly different habits and behaviors we can target them by targeting those around them whether it is those they're close to what the norms are across the group the many but also then building those important relationships with the powerful members of the group, which might be the captains or the leadership group. But sometimes the truly powerful in the locker room aren't those with the armband. So a benefit of habits is that they automate behaviours, but also a potential downside of habits is that they automate behaviours. Because once a skill has been mastered, then perhaps performance declines. And, and for some habits, like tying your shoelace, this isn't a problem. But for many habits, that could potentially cause an issue. Once we know how to do a particular skill or a behaviour has become automated, then we don't put the same level of care or intention into it. Um, and so this can be whether it's doing an exercise in the weight room or prehab exercise, perhaps we start to slip into just going through the motions. And in part, this is why athletes have coaches um, to make sure that not just they're developing their skills, but also technically um, coaching them to make sure that their performance doesn't slip. I'm sure like many of us, we perhaps pay a little bit more care to brushing or flossing our teeth when we have that dentist appointment coming up. And so Clear, in his more advanced skills towards the end of the book, talks about the importance of building in reflection and review processes to keep an eye on your habit. And one thing he says is that reflection and review enables the long-term improvement of all habits because it makes you aware of your mistakes and helps you consider possible paths for improvement. Without reflection, we can make excuses, create rationalizations and lie to ourselves. 
we have no process for determining whether we are performing better or worse. So those are my five key insights from Atomic Habits, a really practical and useful book for thinking about your own behaviour change. And as always, I also like to try and think of it through the lens of sports performance, thinking about the athletes that we're working with as well. If you want to know more about the book, obviously you can have a look on James Clear's website and you'll find all the resources there around the habit journals and decision-making journals, um, as well as the tracking sheets.